In this video I'm going to show you how to let colour be your guide when you are creating a painting and building a painting in layers. So I've put down here quite a bright orange then I'm using that colour as a guide to choose the next colour. So looking at the orange I now want an opposite so I go for a dull less saturated colour and I put it on quite lightly so mix a bit of water in with it so that it's transparent and I can tone, I can dull back the orange but it sits beautifully with the orange because it's dull and the orange is bright. So I do the same. With the blue it's a bright saturated colour and the green that I put underneath it had a bit of that blue mixed into it so it's going to work really nicely together. So I put that on and then each time I add a new colour I look at the colour that I've gone before and I say do I want it to be similar or do I want it to be opposite. So having put that sort of creamy white colour down, that's a very non-desaturated colour, I can come in with a much brighter colour next to that. So I've used the previous colour to be my guide as to what colour to choose next. So I'm coming in with that bright colour and I'm mixing it around but um, letting it, letting the other colours show through it. So using a bit of water to use it as a glaze. The next colour is going to be a bluey grey. Now this is opposite to the yellow. It's cool, the yellow was warm and I'm putting that around as well and it's a little bit darker than the yellow. Coming back with the yellow and then once I've got a palette that I like I could just work within that palette and just create colours that are similar or um, you know just keeping within that palette and this is what I'm going to do in this painting. I'm, I've sort of found my palette and now I'm just going to work within using these colours but now I'm going to start building up the layers. So I can add line, I can add shapes and words and anything really, use any um, media anything that is different from what I've used before, it'll get painted over but it just it gives you something to look through the paint to so that it provides a bit of history and a bit of mystery as to what it all means. So I've, I've put in uh, so those words and now I'm ruling some lines and creating a structure, a linear structure in this painting which is something that I haven't got. And now I'm going to use a stencil and this stencil will help to create an interesting shape and I can repeat it in the um, composition and I'm using this colour which I've already got in the painting, um, it's part of my palette and I can m use this paint uh, thick thickly so that it's opaque or I can, I can add water to it or use it quite thinly as a, as a glaze. So um, here I come in with a brush, so I'm using a different tool this time but I'm using a dark grey which is still part of my palette, it's slightly um, maybe a colour that I didn't use in that original um, block of stripes but it's made of all the colours that I did use in that block so it's just a darker version of the bluey grey really. So now I'm bringing that grey around. I've got some really bright colours in there and I want to add some subtlety. So I'm knocking, I'm putting together subtle desaturated colours next to quite bright saturated colours and that's uh, the yellow coming through there. And now I've put line in before but I did it with a pencil so this time I'm going to do it with the paintbrush using the pale blue that I've used before and now I'm coming in with a red pencil. I used a red pencil before but I'm doing it differently. I'm color, you know, making it solid this time, a solid shape. So I've sort of established my color palette very early on by just looking at one color and then choosing an opposite and using it to um, create a really lovely palette. And now I'm just creating shapes and building up the layers 
A lot of this I might paint over, but you can see that one layer goes on top and you can see through that paint to things that are underneath. And that creates a really rich, interesting surface to look at. So having put down that light blue, I quite liked it, so I'm putting that around using that more. And I liked it next to the orange, so I've made it slightly more saturated and put it next to the orange. And now I'm bringing in that yellow again, which works really nicely with that turquoise blue and the grey. Using a comb to create a different mark. Always looking to create something interesting and new to look at. Keeping within my colour palette and just moving it around moving the paint around and building up the layers, painting over bits, creating shapes, defining edges, and looking to sit opaque paint next to transparent paint because that's a lovely difference. So you can see that the colours that were chosen in the early painting, in the very beginning where I was looking to, for opposites. If I chose desaturated, the next colour I'd choose is saturated. If it was warm, the next colour I'd choose was, was cool. And I established my palette early on and then have just used those same colours to build up the layers and create a really lovely harmonious uh, final painting. So have a go. This is um, a really easy way to uh, work with colour.